What's going on guys, Firewolf Tech here, showing you guys the Rogue Swift OLED PG34WCDM gaming monitor. This is a new OLED 34 inch ultra wide monitor that features a 3440 by 1440 resolution with a fast 240 hertz refresh rate and a 0.03 millisecond response time. You're also getting this super curvy 800R curvature that wraps around your field of vision, giving you an immersive gaming experience. Talking about gaming, it also has NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility and AMD FreeSync Premium Pro for smooth gameplay. What makes this monitor stand out is the awesome 90 watt USB-C display port with KVM switch and a custom heatsink that keeps the monitor running cooler and should help reduce the risk of burn-in. I'll be showcasing PC gaming, PS5 gameplay, MacBook connectivity, and a full unboxing so stay tuned because you and I both want to know if the 34 inch Rogue Swift OLED is worth the premium price of $1,299. I've been using this monitor for a few days now and I'll never get tired of being impressed with the latest third generation OLED which looks absolutely fire. The blacks look amazing and OLED just makes it extra creamy. Color fringing was an issue on older monitors and I'm happy to report that they've significantly reduced it, making it very hard for me to even tell. Now I wish this monitor had a higher resolution for a better pixel density, but 1440p for now will suffice and at least most graphics cards can take full advantage of 240Hz gaming. I personally love ultra wide monitors since it makes multitasking easier, but I do wish it came in a 38 inch version because 4 inches would have made a huge difference. Now the exact viewing size is 33.94 inches which with a resolution of 3440 by 1440 puts the pixel density to about 110 pixels per inch. It's not as sharp as a 32 inch 4K monitor, but still way better than 1080p. Before we get into the fun stuff, let's unbox the 34 inch Rogue Swift OLED. Comes in a really nice box. Let's go ahead and flip it over here. Yeah, you definitely want the side that says front. And it looks like it's kind of open already, so I'm not sure if the delivery drivers wanted to see what's inside, so no need to take out my knife. And the very first thing we have here is gonna be in a nice little instruction manual in case you get lost. It also comes with a really nice color calibration testing reports and this nice little plastic little piece here to make sure it's nice and protected. All right, here is the bottom portion of the monitor stand. It definitely looks really cool. If you guys seen my other videos on the ASUS 49 inch, it has a similar design. And I absolutely love this design. You can see on the bottom, we do have a nice little wingtip screw to make the installation very easy. All right, next up, we got the arm portion of the monitor stand. Again, a really nice design here. It has a nice little dark gray color scheme with black. Let's go ahead and peel this off. And that's super satisfying. You can see a nice gloss black. We have Swift right over there. And then we have this really cool logo pattern here. Has like a triangular design. All right, next up we have is the VESA mount adapter. Now this is what I'm gonna personally gonna be using since I prefer using a monitor arm as you guys know already, but it's nice that they include the adapter. All right, next thing here we have a nice little cover for the bottom of the monitor because it has like this little kind of beaming light on the bottom. And this basically has the pattern of the ROG logo. All right, next up we have is the power adapter brick. This is gonna connect straight to the monitor and, and then we have a separate AC power cord. So I personally like having a separate power brick. Uh, it kind of makes the monitor, uh, you know, way less. So I like seeing this separately. And here's a really nice accessory pouch here. And this is something that they include, I wanna say in almost all of their monitors so far is the same type of bag. And I really like this because it kind of makes the whole experience feel really nice. I also like these bags because they also tell you what cable it is, obviously. So first thing we have is gonna be the DisplayPort cable. And you're gonna notice that all these cables are gonna feature a really nice ROG logo. And I really like the attention to detail of each of these accessories. And it's something that I really like to see. And here's the HDMI cable. The good thing is that it's also ultra certified. So it has a QR code that you can scan, make, letting you know that this cable means business. The next thing we have a USB 3.2 upstream cable. It's gonna be connected right to your PC. And they also include a really nice USB-C to C cable. This is gonna be able to support video, power, and data transfers, which is awesome. And I love when monitors feature the USB-C connectivity, making it very easy to connect your other devices. And last thing is that a pouch, you're gonna get these little covers here. And again, this is gonna be for the lighting beam feature on the bottom of the monitor. So it looks like they give you another RG logo and they give you a clear one. So they give you three of these and then you have two of these. So I guess they assume that you might end up losing these. So these are extra just in case. Next thing they give us a nice booklet for a VIP member notice. They also include a user manual. And then with any ROG monitor, they are gonna give you these really nice cool looking stickers here. 
featuring their beautiful logo. And finally, the last thing, the US plug. And I was wondering where the hell this was and it was the last thing to get from the box. All right, finally, we get to reveal the actual monitor. And by the way, some of you guys like the Grinch slippers here, so they're making a nice comeback. All right, so we have some little drawings here letting us know how to open it, I guess, peel it. There's like a little slit right here, it's pretty cool. All right, before we remove the monitor here, we wanna first attach the monitor stands, or you can use the Visa mount, which I'll show later. And you'll notice right on the bottom of this monitor stand arm, you're gonna see some LED lights. I don't know if you can see there, that's gonna be the light that's gonna beam right down. Then wanna make sure we connect it. This winter screw is very easy to install. We'll make sure it's nice and tight. And once we're here, we're gonna place the ROG hockey puck looking thing. And it goes one way, it's magnetic as you can see here. So if you try to Put it any other way, it won't work. It'll only work one way, so that makes it very easy. And let's go ahead and take this oops, plastic out nice and gentle. It looks like it's another piece of plastic inside. And I guess if you ever want to remove this, you can kind of just push it in inward and this thing comes out. All right, it was a little tedious, but the plastic is actually on the inside. All right, finally got that in. It's a little tedious, it involves, you know, definitely a lot of steps here, but we finally got it on and we can see that ROG logo right on the bottom. And now we're ready to install the monitor stand. So we're just going to angle it right on the bottom here. All right, and once you have that in, you can lift it up. All right, there we have the back of the monitor here. Let's go ahead and take out this plastic film. And I think the design of this monitor looks absolutely fire. I mean, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of, of the design of this. Asus calls this a futuristic cyberpunk inspired aesthetics. And it definitely gives you that really strong gamer vibe. And I think it looks absolutely fire. It has that nice little dark grayish color scheme with that black. I think everything matches, it looks really nice. All right, so let's take a closer look at all of the inputs on the bottom right. We're gonna have a display port and my favorite feature of this is gonna be a USB-C display port as well. And you can see when you close in, it says 90 watts. So it's gonna provide 90 watts of power, which is awesome. And here we have the USB upstream. And then we have another USB-A port, which is gonna be 3.2. And then on the left side, we have our DC input here. This is for power. We have an SPDIF out. And then we have two HDMIs located right over here. And they're, and they're basically positioned downward. So you do have to plug in the cables basically upwards. And located right behind the panel, we have a four directional button here. And then we have two additional buttons on each side of this. And then right underneath the monitor, we have another USB-A port. And then on the left side underneath, we have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. And then we also have another one right over here on the top of the monitor. So we just lift this up here and then we have another USB. And this was not gonna be coated in blue. So this is most likely just USB 2.0. And I like how they position this on the top of the monitor because this monitor arm also has a thread screw here so you can so you can attach different items here such as a camera you can attach a key light and this usb makes it convenient to either charge it up or you can just basically plug in any other device and the last thing about this monitor is this nice oversized heat sink right on the back of the monitor all right let's go ahead and peel this off let's see in the top right we have all the features All right, that was super satisfying. Got that nice, beautiful OLED panel with that nice curvature. And the last little plastic piece is on the bottom, revealing that logo. All right, let's go ahead and power it on. Starting with the gaming PC. Now we're gonna click the power button right on the bottom right. All right, we've got it connected right to my gaming PC. All right, so this is how it's gonna look like on your desk. And you can see as soon as you power it on, you have these red LEDs right on the power indicator and then we have some more right over here you're going to see that rog logo beam down and this pretty much lights up red as well definitely gives off that really nice gamer vibe to it which i like a lot and honestly i'm probably not gonna want to have this on 24 7 so you can always turn it off if you wanted to one thing i like about the monitor stand is that the base of the feet is spread very very wide um, instead of having the feet taking up more space vertically it kind of spreads it more horizontally which i like a lot and going on the back over here 
You can see that the monitor stand doesn't take so much space given the size of the monitor stand. And overall, I do like the cable management. It's still gonna show some of the cables though, um, but overall you can have all the cables routed and depending on how you have the monitor, if it's like sitting low, then obviously you can have pretty much all the cables hidden. And then for context, this desk here is about 26 inches deep. So even with the monitor stand, you still have a lot of space, which I like a lot. A lot of other monitor stands just drop so much space and I really love that horizontal look. But as you guys know, I prefer having it mounted on the monitor arm. So I will be showcasing that as well. The monitor stand gives you a good amount of height adjustment, swivel and tilt. And I find it so cool that the arm portion of the stand moves when you swivel it. It feels very solid and sturdy even when the feet are on top of my oversized mouse pad. All right, the monitor stand is really cool, but as you guys know, I prefer mounting this on a monitor arm. So I'm gonna do just that. All we have to do is push the lever on the bottom. Just lifts up just like that. Next, we're gonna grab our recent mount adapter. Make sure we take that out. And then we're just going to angle it. Next, we're gonna do, we're gonna grab our visa mount plate. And we're gonna line up the holes here. It's gonna be visa mount 100 by 100. And I prefer using thumb screws. I gotta make sure it's nice and tight. And now we're ready to mount it on the monitor arm. And thankfully this monitor doesn't weigh that much. Making it easy to put on this monitor arm. All right, there we have it mounted on the monitor arm. Looks absolutely fire. Definitely prefer this method. And the monitor arm that I'm using here is the Ergotron HX. It's definitely gonna be overkill for this monitor, so there you can definitely use other monitor arms that are more budget friendly, but this is my personal favorite that I've been using for a lot of my premium monitors, and it definitely withstands a lot of pounds. All right, so when you first connect this your PC, it automatically scales the resolution to 100%. And if you want the text to be larger, you can just change it here. Um, me personally, I would probably want 125%, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go back and forth to see which one is better for me. And you can see display resolution is the maximum 3440 by 1440. And then over advanced display here, we can see that the Hertz defaults to just 60 Hertz. So you do have to manually change it. So you can change it right over here. It keep changes and now we have the full refresh rate over here and then another thing you can do here to change the colored bit depth we want to go open up our nvidia control panel and right over here you can see that it is g-sync compatible and right over here we're gonna hit change resolution and we have the make, making sure that we have the fastest refresh rate at 240 hertz we're going to use nvidia color settings we're going to set the output color depth to 10 and make sure this is full, we hit apply. You see right after that change, we have 10 bit color depth. And then obviously you can adjust more of the color settings, but for now I'm gonna set it up just like this. Now we have the full refresh rate. Now let's test out the gaming performance of the PG34WCDM using my gaming PC equipped with an RTX 4090 and an AMD Ryzen 9 7900X, which I'll have my full build in the description box below. Stay tuned because I will also showcase PS5 gameplay. Loading up a fast paced first person shooter like Modern Warfare 3 on this monitor while being able to achieve 240 plus frames per second is fuego. Everything just looks so buttery smooth and that's also thanks to an ultra low 0.03 millisecond response time and Nvidia G-Sync compatibility. This monitor really gives you the tools to slap in the battlefield and I enjoyed every frame of it. I'm able to keep the highest graphic settings and enable DLSS to quality and still average just above 240 frames. 1440p is less demanding than 4K, so if you have an older or less powerful graphics card, you can always make minor tweaks to enjoy those high frames. Keep in mind that when you see 1440p benchmarks, it's usually 2560 by 1440 and since this monitor is 3440 by 1440, the amount of pixels are higher, so don't expect your frames to match 1440p benchmarks. So just keep that in mind. You also get great built-in gaming features like being able to quickly change the color profile to FPS mode, which brightens everything and gives you an awesome shadow boost, which makes it easier to spot enemies in dark areas. I also love the aggressive 800R curvature, which keeps you immersed and locked in. W OLED really elevates the gaming experience and it makes games like Forza 5 really pop. Giving you an example of how the game visual settings changes how the game looks, you have a good variety to find a setting that works for you. Keep in mind that these settings only work if you have HDR off. I did try HDR gaming, but I found myself gravitating more to just using SDR and utilizing the custom preset. Even in the night scene, I like to adjust the shadow boost just a bit. 
Now it's important to know that this monitor doesn't come with built-in speakers, which I'm always okay with because having dedicated speakers sound way better anyway. Taking a break from gaming, this OLED display packs awesome features. It has Visa Display HDR400 True Black certification for an awesome viewing experience. I mean, just take a look at that creamy honey surrounded by perfect deep blacks. Brightness levels are great with a peak brightness of 450 nits with ASUS claiming that it is 30% brighter with 100% window and HDR. I can definitely tell that these OLED monitors are getting brighter and better. For that beautiful rich color, this monitor is rated at a 99% DCI-P3 and a Delta E less than 2 for an amazing accuracy. You can really see the colors pop. The fact that it has a non-glare display is a huge plus. Having a USB-C display port is super clutch. Being able to easily connect your laptop with a single USB-C cable is amazing and ASUS also adds a respectable 90 watt of power delivery. Connecting my M3 MacBook Pro is easy and simple, but I do wish this monitor had an auto input switch. Instead, you have an auto input detection, so you have to manually switch it. Either way, I'm happy to report that my MacBook is able to get the highest refresh rate of 240Hz and the max resolution of 3440x1440 off of a single USB-C cable. Mac OS would have looked amazing if the resolution was higher since my MacBook screens look so much better, but being able to continue your workflow seamlessly and bring it to the larger screen is still a huge plus for me. This is great for those that might have a separate work laptop, or maybe you just want to be able to have both Mac and PC running. Another great thing about this monitor is the built-in KVM switch. I can easily go into the menu settings and change the KVM from USB-B to USB-C and that will make my mouse, keyboard, and stream deck automatically connect to my MacBook, which is super convenient. ASUS takes it a step further and adds a smart KVM feature, which bridges both USB-B that connects to your primary PC to your USB-C laptop. When you run it for the first time, it will put the display in picture by picture mode. And in this example, you'll see my gaming PC on one side and Mac OS on the other. On each device, there will be a new USB drive to install the smart KVM software that will allow this bridge to work. Once installed on each system, the software will detect the two systems and will give you a green light when everything is connected. Now my mouse and keyboard are able to control both systems by moving the cursor over to the other input and you'll see the mouse effortlessly change. But that's not even the coolest thing. I can actually take a file from my MacBook and drag it over to my gaming PC, which will automatically transfer the files. Now I know your monitor can't do that. All right, let's jump right back into gaming. But this time I wanna know how the PS5 performs on the PG34WCDM. I still find it a little annoying to have to manually switch the input, but at least you can still use your PS5. The PS5 is a little tricky on this monitor. By default, the PS5 will output in the 21 by nine aspect ratio, but it's not the same when you're using a gaming PC. The PS5 is stretching the image to fit the ultra wide monitor, which is harder to tell on a 34 inch monitor, but it is definitely being stretched. If you don't mind playing in a stretch format, then you'll be fine, and I did enjoy Astro's Playroom in this format. When gaming in ultra wide, the only video output settings from the PS5 are either 4K or 1080p, and VRR up to 120Hz is only supported on 1080p. To enable 1440p resolution, you'll have to switch the aspect ratio to 16x9, which is what I would recommend anyway. Keep in mind that changing the aspect ratio or going into picture by picture disables the variable refresh rate. You will have two small black bars, but since it's OLED, it's a perfect black and honestly isn't too bad. Even though VRR is disabled, you can still enjoy higher frames by enabling performance mode on games that support it. While this monitor doesn't have built-in speakers, at least you have a 3.5mm headphone jack that you can use an auxiliary cable to connect to external speakers if you don't want to use headsets. Picture by picture in a 50 by 50 split does work, but on the PS5 side, it is shrunk further, which isn't the best experience, but doable. If you're worried about OLED burn-in, which I know a lot of you are, ASUS gives you a two-year warranty that includes panel burn-in, which gives you peace of mind. To further extend the life and quality of your OLED, there's also a screen protection option in the menu settings that allows you to perform a pixel clean that lasts about six minutes. By default, you'll get a reminder to perform one after eight hours of continuous use, which is pretty generous. I would also recommend auto hiding your taskbar because you get the benefit of not having the taskbar stay static all the time and you also gain extra space to work with. To access the menu settings, you'll find a four directional joystick button right behind the ROG logo. The first option is the gaming tab where you can enable VRR, game plus features, game visual settings, and adjust shadow boost levels. 
I'm going to cover the gaming options real quick since after all this is a gaming monitor. The King Plus has some cool features like adding an FPS counter, crosshairs that show up right on the center of the monitor, and even a sniper crosshair that gives you a small box that zooms in from 1.2x to 2x with the included option of night vision. Game visual, as you saw earlier, lets you change how the colors and blacks look on a display, and Shadow Boost lets you lift the deep black shadows, making it easier to see, and this is helpful in FPS gaming. Moving along the menu, you have an image tab that lets you customize brightness and contrast levels. This is also where you can change the aspect ratio if you wanted to simulate a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and even customize the size to simulate a 27 inch or 24 and a half inch monitor. There's even an esports option, which to me looks the same as 27 inches. And keep in mind that variable refresh phrase will be disabled. Next in the settings, we have color customization, then an input selection, picture in picture slash picture by picture options, lighting effect, which changes the RGB rogue logo on the back of the monitor, then your favorites, which you can customize short menu options. And finally, we have system setup for all the other info and settings. I'll cover the important ones like USB setup to enable KVM switch settings and the screen protection, which should be its own separate menu option. You could also download display widget center that lets you adjust most of the important menu options in a cleaner and easier setup. Using this monitor for my day-to-day -day task has so far been a good experience. As you guys know, I prefer ultra wide monitors over standard 16 by nine monitors. And for me, 34 inches is on the smaller side and would have preferred a 38 inch. But I think 34 inches will be able to fit into a lot of gaming setups since it doesn't take up so much space. Multitasking is easier and I could set up three windows split evenly pretty comfortably. But in my experience so far, having two windows side by side is perfect. I wouldn't use HDR since it looks pretty bad. And at the moment, there seems to be an issue with HDR where a future firmware update could fix. As a content creator, I use editing software like DaVinci Resolve to create and edit my videos. Having an ultra wide aspect ratio gives you a water view of the timeline and doesn't feel cramped. Thanks to the aggressive curvature, all the important features on each of the sides are easily viewable without having to turn your head all the way. I've enjoyed making content on this monitor and this very video has been created with this monitor. So is the 34 inch Asus Rogue Swift OLED worth the price tag of $1,299? Keeping HDR to the side, I think this monitor is worth that premium price since you're getting a beautiful OLED display and a crazy fast 240Hz refresh rate. If you catch this monitor on sale, it becomes an even better value. I also love the USB-C DisplayPort input and the USB hub that doubles up as a KVM switch. And overall, I think the PG34WCDM is a solid choice for ultra-wide PC gaming and productivity. If you are interested in getting this monitor or the mini tech that you've seen in this video, I will have affiliate links down below, which also helps and support the Firewolf Tech channel. I want to thank you for sticking to the end of the video and would also like to know your thoughts and feedbacks in the comments down below. I hope this video was helpful for you guys and I would love your support with a like, share, and subscribe. Firewolf out.